Welcome to a moment of intriguing introspection beyond the realms of fear, hesitancy, and doubt. A deep dive into the questions of the ages shared with the courage that may challenge perception, yet teases open the expansive depth of conscious awareness. This is a rare and unique moment in our collective history. And beyond all sense of dogma, I am Master Lady Kira Ra, promising to call forward the essence of all that you are. Join me as I offer the latest self-ascension revelations with supportive wisdom. And why not remember that peace, love, and joy are your birthright. So this is the moment to bring your hand to your heart and to give yourself the gift of relaxing into a deep breath with a wondrous exhale. I look forward to joining you right now in another episode of Expanding Consciousness. Well, namaste and welcome, welcome. I am Master Lady Kira Ra. You caught me here with my Egyptian healing rods and putting those down, I want to welcome you to Expanding Consciousness. You know, coming together in this space is such a gift. It's an opportunity, it's an invitation, and at the end of the day, my prayer is that it's an awareness, that it calls out from inside of you an aha with each moment that I have the honor of engaging with you, to be in the awareness. And and this library, this catalog of self-ascension, All of these little wondrous journeys through all of these podcasts and episodes is to offer to you in a, in a quick snapshot, a seed, something to look at, perhaps plant, maybe water, maybe watch blossom, maybe discover it wants more friends and, and to give yourself the gift of simply being open to expanding beyond where you have expanded before. Because that's how consciousness expands, is the relaxation out of that paradigm that seeks to keep you within it, because all it knows is self-preservation. To be able to walk through that lens and be on the other side of it and say, oh, there you are. To be able to wake up through, at the sake of using words that I pray are not hijacked, to simply open your eyes, to simply open your eyes in your own way to that which is beyond the veil. And and how do we do that? You know, how do we go beyond the veil? Well, the first thing is to just simply remember this. And my beautiful husband spent all those years studying David Hawkins' work and unlocking it so extraordinarily. And I was so blessed to be side by side with him. And as Sri would share, Remember that your veils lift as your level of consciousness rises. Your veils lift as your level of consciousness rises. And so if you want to lift your veils, then there needs to be at some point a conscious commitment to go beyond the four medicines and stay in that central, the fifth. It's that fifth medicine, consciousness itself. And so I'm so excited about this episode because we're really diving into the alchemy of compassionate wisdom. Really consider that. Compassionate wisdom. That could almost seem like two different sides of a coin at some points, but the alchemy of compassionate wisdom is actually the ultimate self-inquiry of what in me invited this to be. The foundation of the yoga of self-ascension. To be in the gift of the self-gaze, to be able to gaze into the mirror and be grateful, to remember, I am as you are, to know beyond that wheel of fear, doubt, and hesitancy. Even as I'm sharing this with you right now, notice notice your breath, notice your breath, notice your heart center, notice your throat. Notice your belly. I'm noticing there's just a lot of activity going on as I'm sharing this. I'm really feeling all that coming in, you know, from from like all of you. There it is. 
And so what in me invited this to be is not meant to be anything other than the invitation to celebrate that you are noticing what you are noticing. Hmm. What does that mean? Noticing what you are noticing. So as you're breathing that in, the noticing what I'm noticing, I want to remind you that I always look forward to hearing from you and that right here at amfm247.com, or if you're listening on an AM or FM station, go to amfm247.com where you can post a comment with any of these episodes in the archives, and I'm happy to respond to you there. Or if you'd like to communicate directly, you can send an email and that can go to support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at selfascension, S-E-L-F-A-S-C-E-N-S-I-O-N.com. And I really encourage you to do that. Um, that is answered by a beautiful woman named Falling Snow Woman who makes sure that those messages go where they need to be sent. And I also want to invite you, as we're in this what in me invited this to be moment, to go deeper with that. If you are connecting with this episode in any form, in any way, time stamping it into any realm, wherever you are receiving this, wherever your heart is on this frequency and whatever method of delivery is coming forward for you, then try to find your way to sriankira.com and tosabluemountain.com. The gift of Tosa Blue Mountain is the sustenance of compassionate wisdom itself. It's the remembrance of the purity and the beauty that we are capable of restoring into this planetary vision as soon as we collectively remember it enough. Hence why the momentum is to do everything to erase, erase, right? Move it, move it, move it. When indeed the only thing that we should be erasing is the direct effect of the technology. And please go to at the YouTube channel, Official Shri and Kira, YouTube slash Official Shri and Kira. Make sure you have subscribed because a lot of information comes out there. Go, sir, erase, erase, erase. Watch the video. Learn the process. I've also done an update on this one recently. So when you search at my website, at the uh, YouTube channel, you should get both. Why is this so important? Because in the world experience, in this specific potentiality, as we fly and, and own our eternal nature, as we restore all that we are, that alchemy weaves into this specific field of potentiality, into what we, how we delineate the time experience. All of that happens universally through the sacred sequence of incarnation. In this specific potentiality, we utilize the, the sequencing of numerology, ascended numerology, the totality of the 13. We use, utilize that system to be able to come forward and really be able to own our mastery when we are ready to have the sacred scrolls laid in front of us again. And that's what I have the honor of doing every time I offer someone their sacred sequence or, or any of the practitioners around the world that offer that. To, to be at the moment of this alchemy, to be at this moment of what in me invited this to be. In, and remember, self-inquiry has a foundation as well. Sincerity, love, and presence. Presence. Sincerity, love, and presence are the ultimate trifecta because they equal miracles every time. Every time without fail. It's the sustaining of sincerity, sincerity, love, and presence that is constantly spiraling inside of this alchemical field of extraordinarily rapid transformation. And I, I want to stop again and invite you to take a breath. Because if you're listening and going, gosh, Kira, I'm not sure I understand, or gosh, Kira, I get it, right? No matter where you are on that spectrum, you're here right now which means that within you is a depth of connective consciousness that is right there radiating coming out of your zero point generator field and saying, hello, are you ready? How may I be of service? Remember that you are the commander of the ship. Humanity has, has 
is in right now and and really time stamping into this potentiality into this specific broadcast right now we are sitting at june 11 2024 and in this moment the fields of potentiality are coming together with such a pace of peak everything's coming in it's like the greatest show on in the universe in eternity this is one of those wondrous little moments where it's not that all the rest aren't wondrous. This one is just so unique and so rare that, of course, it keeps attracting, attracting, attracting. Similar to when you embody the law of instantaneous manifestation, another wondrous inquiry of what in me invited this to be. Because when we look at that pyramid of spiritual awakening, Remember that we're all born into density consciousness. And in density consciousness, it's never about what in me invited this to be. It's what in you did this to me. Consider the difference in those two energies. Density consciousness is all about safety. It's, it's saying, oh my God, where am I? And, and then it's all about the me. It's really the me, me, me. It's, it's, the, it's the warm up, right? And in that moment, in that moment, compassionate wisdom is not even in the radar. The level of consciousness as it is working through the pyramid of spiritual awakening is the veil. Your level of consciousness is your veil. Lift your veil, lift your consciousness. And so as you grow through those experiences, there comes that moment where as you're, as you're moving through that world of density and, and in this experience specifically, often through contrast experiences, heavy light, heavy dark, love, hate, right? All of it, all the seven polarities. So as you're moving through those seven polarities, the seven polarities of free will, there comes a moment where you have that opportunity to look beyond. This is where those five medicines are really helping because the physical and the emotional are all about density consciousness until they actually start moving into the mental because the mental is the lift into the conscious awareness that takes you into spiritual activism. Density consciousness, spiritual activism. Instead of me, 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 it's we, 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 however it's codified. It's only my we, not your we. It's just a sophisticated me with more people and voice around it. So the consciousness itself hasn't really evolved that much However, there is a sense of a greater good as long as it's just the one you agree with. And so it's a really huge step up. And, and, and what happens and what Sri tracked for 22 years is that that's the moment where instead of having 100% ego governance or ego dominance, as he used to say, all it takes is, is, is a glimmer. It's that, you know, put a flashlight in your hand, right? Put it right down there, turn it on, you can't see it. And you just have to lift it a little bit and you see how much light starts coming out. That's what this is. It's that little bit moment that gets you into the collective we. And all of a sudden, when the what in me invited this to be, there's still a heaping helping dose of victim consciousness in there. But what there also is, is the entrance of love and compassion for someone other than the self-preservation self. Remember, at the base of it all, is this essence of self-preservation written into the program that says when you come into density, this is what we're writing in. This is going to be the overwriting code, right? Self-preservation at all costs, even at the sake of everyone else's loss. Interesting code. And so breathe through that right now. And just whew, relax. And I want to invite you into the recognition that when the sacred sequence of incarnation brings you in, when you arrive right here in planet density, right? The alchemy of compassionate wisdom is already at work. It is never non-existent. It's at work through those that are taking care of you. It's at work through yourself. Your own skills are, are kicking in. But the alchemy of compassionate wisdom at, in this moment, as we the human, the human, as, as we call forward this greater embodiment of our eternal nature 
in conscious awareness of all of our multidimensional presence. And I want you to breathe that in because that can be kind of overwhelming to hear, right? So you're born into this third dimension and, and it's an incredible experience. And in this third dimension, there are things like death and there's things like polarity that are all very much, you know, this is it. This is what you came for. This is the big leagues, right? You came for this. That's what the sacred sequence of incarnation helps us resolve so effortlessly is that this is why we came. This is the yummy stuff to touch, to feel, to know. And then once we've really done that, and that's why everyone pops at their own time, right? Once you've really done that, when your eyes do start opening up into the greater we, through the pyramid of spiritual awakening, through the experience of spiritual activism, you get to the moment where you can break free into ascension awareness. And when, you, when you're looking at ascension awareness, when you're, when you're looking at yourself, it's through the eyes of compassion. It's through the eyes that become the witnesser of the witness. The witnesser of the witness. It's when you are noticing what you're noticing. That opportunity to be very cognizant, conscious, and aware. Not excusing or, or having this sense of escapism, because this is often misunderstood. It's to have that mastery presence it's, that can gaze with love, sincerity, and presence right? Those three magic miracle making seeds that can gaze through the experience rather than be ruled by it and become that still center again, to be standing in the center of the spinning, to be able to see the totality. Because that's when we enter into our own transition. That's when we move from this death experience. You know, what in me invited this to be is a beautiful self-inquiry. It takes you everywhere with everything, unlimited. And it is, it is a neutral experience of self-inquiry. It is only through our own perceptual filters that we would add anything to it other than the neutrality that it is inviting you to see. What in me invited this to be? Oh, got it. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. And regardless of the what in me invited this to be, you're lifting because in that anchoring of, of what let's say is the fifth dimensional experience of the witnesser where, where the energy of the transition becomes apparent. Many enter this state yet the ego governance is still so high that they, they just circulate within this state and dip in and out of it frequently to really anchor in this state is to be in the compassion of keeping your eyes on the divine at all times. I always like sharing that Archangel Zodkil shared it so beautifully with Sri. Zodkil would always say that when you arrive in the fifth dimension, it is very much like a waiting room because you are very, very tired. And so it's like you just go, oh, I made it, right? I'm here. And then there's a the fascination of, oh, I made it. I'm here, right? But you're in the waiting room. It's, 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 like, a, it's like a middle room. And when you're in the waiting room long enough, Maybe you start talking to the person, why are you here? How did you get here? Oh, well, this is how I got here. And suddenly the ego re-engages in the fascination of being there and the self-importance of the arrival. So you have that choice of the engagement, very much in the group think, the collective think, what I would giggle and call a new age mainstream, and the, or the collective group think. And rather than be the one sitting in there patiently, knowing that this can't be all there is, all you have to do is turn around and stand up. And you realize there's been a crystal stairwell there the whole time. But only you can take it. The question is that when we arrive into this witness or experience, there is such a strong potentiality for the air of specialness or spiritual aloofness or the spiritualized ego that, that is cross corners across the globe. And, and the reason it happens is because there's still a lot of rules and dogma and beliefs of specialness. Because remember that the beliefs of specialness are the greatest way to stop you in a free will zone, self-entrapment, right? So how do you break free of that? You have to stand up. You have got to physically 
stand up, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna physically stand up. Let's let's I'm gonna do it exactly, right? Because that's what you gotta physically stand up. And and one of the things I'm really tall, so <laughs> forgive me. So you, you've got to physically stand up. And as you do, as you physically stand up, give yourself a moment of really anchoring your feet. Just really anchor your feet and you know, straight back, right? So really anchor your feet. And then just allow your hands right here, heart center. There you are. Feel your heart. Stand. And if you can't stand, then be sitting really strong. I wish, I don't know if I can show you my feet or not, but all the way down there um, are my feet. Okay, there we are. So when we're standing and we have our feet and we have our hands on our heart, take in a deep Ave Sa breath. So remember when you're feeling your heart, that's the Ave, Ave. So let's just breathe in deeply through the nose. Feel the word Ave, Ave. Saw coming out of the mouth. And as you're standing, make sure your spine is straight. And if you can't stand, sit straight. Just be sitting straight. If you're driving, that's okay. You can be breathing, right? So if you're standing, if you want, if you can, it's good to just shift like I'm just moving. You want to be just moving so that you're just moving, right? You want to be moving to shift, 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 right? So you're moving and just make sure that you're balanced and you feel comfortable doing that. And what you're doing right now, if you're standing and if you're sitting, you can just, if, you, and if you're not able to do this while you're sitting, then just feel this energy, feel like this movement energy that's happening underneath your feet right now. And now what I want you to do is just to begin feeling love, just love, just the energy of love. And let's feel that really just coming in around that left foot, coming in around that right foot. And then I want you to just feel this wave of love, this incredible wave of love and just feel it come all the way up base of the spine. We're going to bring that together, bring it all the way up, right out of the crown chakra, opening up that Taurus field around you. Feel that radiant energy. It's going to come right out. This love energy is coming all the way up, straight out your crown, straight out the top of your forehead. And that energy is going straight up. And then it's as if you're moving your arms out to the side, going round, round, round. You're scooping. You're bringing all that energy right back into the heart. That's the gift of compassionate wisdom because compassionate wisdom offers to you the opportunity to scoop love into your heart, to, to literally love yourself enough to stand up and be the witnessing seventh dimensional presence outside of all judgment, beginning of self for that fifth dimensional witnesser that is ready to get out of the waiting room and says, you know what? I, I know there's got to be more. I've heard the same thing how many millions of times for how many years? Well, there is more. But it takes courage. It takes fortitude. In the case of Sri and I, it took two people in one body because it's that much. But the good news is that for you, it's a whole lot easier. And that's why I do this every week for you. Because this information needs to be shared. And that's why I bow before Emma over AMFM 247 for really keeping the airwaves open, for doing everything she can to make that happen. I bow before you for listening. And I bow before you that are over at YouTube, Official Sri and Kara, help us spread the word. Come see me at Ecuador. Go to SriAndKara.com right now. It's my shameless plug because it matters that much. But in July, the end of July, after 22 years, the Ascended Realms have opened the gateway for you. Everything is colliding. We have three meteor showers that are going to collide at a peak date. We have so much happening in July. It's alarming and, and fascinating and celebratory. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we're going to literally weave our quantum alchemies. And I am going to, for the first time ever, share with you the anointing protocols, teach them to you so you can teach others that open up the channels of teleportation. They open up the channels of our cities. Imagine if you can assist those who are going to be in physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, mental pain. You might not have anything except your love and armed with, with your, your energy field. And hopefully the ability to remember what we will be teaching. 
This material can only be taught live during that time. You don't have to be there live to receive it. But together we are weaving the quantum alchemies. And this process is a full soul retrieval restoration experience that by the end of the process, you will have done this for yourself and know how to do it for others. I'm sharing this with you because it's that important. The more of us that remember how to do this, it will exponentially help others. It's a wonderful way. And I'm honored that I've been invited to bring you into my personal healing temple here at Tosa Blue Mountain, my little dungeon built out of clay and share it with you and share all of the harmonic frequencies of your highest essence. We are right now in the alchemy of compassionate wisdom and compassionate wisdom is discerning and compassionate wisdom is a gift. You are capable of it. You have been growing into it. No matter what the mind may seek to tell you, you are here right now. And that means it's your time. What in me invited this to be? Ah, 22 years of loving you. And I look forward to being with you again. Get to SriAndKara.com. I love you with all my heart. Many blessings. Thank you for joining me on Expanding Consciousness. Learn more about the Yoga of Self Ascension at SriAndKira.com and make sure you're subscribed to YouTube Official Sri and Kira. Remember, you are the gift. I love you and look forward to being with you again. Namaste.